praise the Lord, uh, School of Supernatural out of King's Fire and my, my Facebook all over the world right now live and it'll be uh, from Zoom on to uh, YouTube later today. Amen. If everything keeps working correctly. Amen. Praise God. We'll be talking today about fulfillment. I want you to go to Genesis 2. And I have a lot to share. We're going to be sharing some scriptures, but <clears throat> even yesterday, I thought I'd go in another direction. And by my wife looked over last night and I said, I'm doing a brand, a whole brand new message. I, I had to go that direction on it. And I kept going back and writing and writing. I got all kind of handwritten notes all over the back of it. Amen. And so God, God is doing great and mighty things. Yes. Yes. Amen. So there's nothing impossible to him. So go to Galatians chapter two, if you would. <clears throat> Genesis 2? No, Galatians. 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 Like Galatians. What's the title? Galatians chapter 2, fulfillment. Thank you. <clears throat> and this is what we're going to talk about today. A lot of Christians, though they have a ticket to heaven, they're going to heaven, they're not fulfilled. Mm -hmm. the, there's an emptiness in every one of us that only God can fill. Yes. yes. But many, many Christians are only letting him feel part of that. And they let everything else, materialism, uh, other things in life, try to take the place of the Lord. And they're never satisfied. They run to and fro trying to find what they're looking for, but it's not there. Amen. Amen. We start at nine. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> and so anyway, Galatians chapter two, very familiar. One of my favorite verses, I've quoted a lot. Yes. <clears throat> and we read 20 and 21, Galatians 2, verse 20 and 21. Yes, amen. I have been crucified with Christ and no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Mm -hmm. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Those of number 21, we don't read that often. I do not set aside the grace of God. Remember that grace of God. Mm. For, his righteous, for if righteousness comes to the law, that Christ died in vain. So he's telling us he does not set aside the grace of God. The grace of God, the unmerited favor of God, and the divine enablement to God. In other words, all the gifts of the Spirit we operate in because of his grace. Yeah, I can't good. earn it. I can't get good enough to get it. I can't buy it. It's not for sale. Amen. It's all the source of the book of Acts. Thought he could buy it. That did not work out well for him. And so, but he said, the righteous come through the law, then Christ died in vain. Now, a lot of times we think that, you know, either we're not under the Old Testament law of Moses, though the moral law continues right in the New Testament, by the way. Amen. And uh, Ten Commandments is still very important today. Yes. And so, but the thing is, they, they think that by their, their righteous work, their good works, they can fulfill that, but they cannot. See, uh, my righteousness, the Bible says, is as filthy rags in the sight of God. Yes. And you study that out in the in the, the Hebrew, you'll find out it's talking about women's menstrual cloths. That's what our good works are, and our own righteousness in the sight of God is. I'm righteous because he is righteous. Come on. Yes. By his blood. Not by my good work. I do good works because I, I am saved. Yeah. But I do not do good works to get saved. That's right. <clears throat> I return tithes. I'm faithful to the house of God. I minister. I witness because I am saved. Yes. Not to get saved. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Amen. And so if the righteous come to the law, then Christ died in vain. A lot of people try to use our righteousness is nothing more than self-righteousness. And they try to use self-righteousness, their good works. If I did all this, like we used to always have the same, we ask someone, you've been busy? Oh, yeah, I've been busy. That really don't cut it. It's not about being busy. It's about being effective. Amen. Yes. And unfortunately, many Christians that have a ticket to heaven, going to heaven, thank God for that. But see, I already had that ticket. I'm here to bring heaven to earth. Amen. But because they had that ticket to heaven, they're doing self-righteous acts, trying to be fulfilled, and they still feel empty because only he can fill that. <clears throat> so let's read that verse 20 again, please. I have been crucified with Christ, and no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life which 
I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. And notice that I live by the, the faith uh, in the Son of God. <clears throat> that, that is really a bad translation. That word in is not in in the Greek. I live by the faith of the Son of God. There's a difference between have the faith in God and have the faith of God. Yeah. That's why Jesus, even in Mark 11, says, speak to the mountain, be removed. Be cast to see, do not doubt your heart. But if those things where you spoke shall come to pass. And right before that, he, they translate, have faith in God. But it's a bad translation, even in Mark 11, is the faith of God. Paul understood this. If you had to go to the old King James Version, but he said, I pray you in Christ's stead. Paul said, when I'm praying for you, it's just like Jesus standing there praying for you. His hand's on you right now. See, Paul had a revelation of his identity in Christ. Most Christians do not. You could tell by their effectiveness. Oh, they're busy. Oh, I got to do that. I got to go here. I got to go there. Are they effective? We'll get deeper in that later. <clears throat> Let's go to uh, Matthew 15. Verse 8 and 9. Matthew 15, verse 8 and 9. That's right. And before we go there, let me say you need to develop something very deep in the spirit. And make a commitment to God that's not shallow, not empty, not, not without power. Some people make a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. I had a man I pastored years ago that he break your eardrums when he prayed. Now I'm loud, I'm noisy, I know that. But but I mean, he thought by the loud noise, it meant he's powerful, but nothing was happening. I, I, I would come up in a legalistic group. I thought that's what you had to do for power. If I had learned by a powerful ministry that I could just simply reach over and lay hands on those souls, I'd command you healed. That's right. They get healed. Mm -hmm. Now I'm so noisy. When I was in the world, I was noisy. When I had parties in the world, I was noisy. <laughs> I used to invite people in my home to have outdoor cookouts and drinking parties. Before it was over, I was chasing around the, the yard of church. I hit him in the head. I don't know why people didn't come back to my parties. They're my BC day for our saint. Thank God for the blood. Amen. So Matthew 15, verse 8 and 9. The, Jesus said that. I didn't say it. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Jesus said that. Think about it. A lot of people will live and die 12 inches from God. The difference between the heart and the mouth. And, and later I will teach you an in-depth study on the heart. So your, your heart, your pumper is more than you think it is. I won't get into all of it right now. I know your medical background, no. But it actually, they have found some brain type activity in your pumper. Mm. Amen? Amen. And so we'll talk about that later in deeper classes. But anyway, he said, they draw near me with their mouth. They're speaking good things. And in vain, they worship me. Teaching doctrines, to as doctrines, the commandments of men, doctrines about the true teaching of God. They're teaching commandments of men. But man said this, and man said that. And, 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 and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going I'm to be busy. I'm always going to be moving. Amen. I have roofers been working on my house for several days now. It didn't fit. They ran out of shingles. But I mean, I've never seen a crew work like that in my life. They're wide open. I mean, like ants. I mean, a blur. I finally found one spoke a little English. So I started witnessing him and showing my card. <laughs> Amen. I like, never found one who could understand that much. Call me. But uh, and so there's an emptiness in every part of the heart that can only be filled and satisfied with the Lord. Some Christians, I have several statements I wrote down. Some Christians try to partially serve the Lord. They're constantly looking for something or someone to satisfy the void. Some seek uh, material things. Some run from ministry to ministry, from meeting to meeting. I've shared with you before. I had a lady, I passed one time, a great, great woman of God. At every meeting, anywhere, she'd go to it. I mean, she might spend thousands of dollars, doesn't run that, Lord, she God, praise God. 
go to meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. Every time there's a meeting, she's she gone. But all the time I passed her, she never won one soul to Jesus. So she was very busy, but it wasn't affected. I'm like a sponge. You know, we just went to the to the to revival of Batavia. I came back and, and I already soaked up things. As soon as I got back, I started seeing clear in the spirit I ever saw in my life. Yeah, I didn't come back empty. Amen. 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 I'm like a sponge. Some of y'all just went to the one in New Jersey, come back on fire about it, what God's doing. Praise God. And so when, I, when, I, when something's going on, if I feel that thump of the spirit, I go. Right. Uh, one time uh, I, I wanted to go to, I'm certified with uh, Dr. Bill Hamm and CI International for advanced prophetic training. And I wanted to go in Versailles, Indiana. At that time, I didn't have money to rent a car. My car I had would never made it. All I had, my old 79 Yamaha motorcycle. Three o'clock one Sunday afternoon, I hopped on that cycle and took off. I stopped, I stopped somewhere in, uh, I think, Pennsylvania overnight. Jumped on it, running good. Next morning, took off again and started running bad, running good and running bad. Going, ran and boom, raw fuel. You know, you know that, John? Uh, he's a cyclist, too. And, and, and uh, I went all the way there. I remember calling my wife from a Wendy's saying, you know, I've had a lot of problems with this cycle. And my, my spark plug started getting loose. I stopped. I knew how to do a Healy call uh, installation. I stopped at a little porthouse somewhere, bought the, the wrench and the Healy call. In Columbus, Ohio, where the freeways come together, that thing blew, hit me in the left leg. They really had the rubber part of the plug wire on it. Of course, being a combat veteran, I didn't jump off the cycle. You know, I'm crewed by 65 and 70, pow. <laughs> and right between that thing, 95 degrees, the pouring sweat. I installed a Healy call, got back on, kept going. But the reason running bad wasn't that, it had a pickup call. I didn't know what it was. So I, I, think, I think I made the Ellenville, my, coming home, my son's had to come, but I wanted to be there. Right. You know, and when I feel that thump, I'm going to get there. Amen. But if I don't feel that thump, I said, man, I know that's going to be good. Maybe I'll catch some on YouTube later, but I'm not, I'm not going unless I feel the thumb of the spirit. God wants me to go here. Come on. Yep. Amen. Yes. And, and that's important, but a lot of people don't do that. Oh, this is going to be fun. They're going for their little goosebumps. Nope. Oh, I felt the frilly. Oh, I felt so, oh, some bumps. It's so nice, but that's great. Amen. I'm glad you felt that. Now, what are you going to do? About Amen. Mm -hmm. It'd be like somebody walking on the job chair and a boss man. It feels so good to be in the company. Are you, you going to work today? Oh, no. Uh, not me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they give you the left foot of fellowship. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Okay, and so you must ask yourself, what does your experience produce? We need a total surrender, abandonment to God. God, I'm yours. I'll go anywhere, I'll do anything. Amen. Praise God, I'm yours. Lord, tell me to go, I'll go. I'll go to dangerous areas. I'll risk my life. I'll spend my last dollar to get there. I'll go, Lord. But I want to make sure it's the Lord and not my flesh, Amen. not pride. Well, look where I went. Uh-uh. You don't know where I've been. <laughs> Amen. Okay, let's go to Matthew 16. I like that so much. I'd be patient twice my deals. I had to put on the line through one of them. That's right. Wait a minute. You just read that, Pastor. It's good. <laughs> Matthew 16, verse 24 through 26. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. <clears throat> Notice the last verse, verse 26, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? You think about it, what is the value of a soul? <clears throat> I mean, what, what is that value? But Jesus said, if you want to come back to him, you have to deny yourself. That means sometimes you have to rearrange your schedule to fit him in. You know, as you, you already probably figured out, I, I believe in time. I tithe the time I came to God, the third year old adult. To, I mean, just last night, boom, boom, ties and offering online. Amen. The king's fire. And I believe in time and I believe in offering. And I, I did it faithful right, right from the very beginning. But, but it, it's an important thing to realize that in our life, 
It's not just when we return tithes. And that, that's a good indication of your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Very good indication. Amen. I found as a pastor over the years, the first thing I'll notice when someone starts getting cold in God, they're giving drops. I always know something else that someone would be first, second, third row. But it's always church. I'm not talking about it here today. Amen. But, but <laughs> the first, second, third row, they'll, they'll be sitting there every service, and all of a sudden I come in one day and they're on the back row. On, I went to one lady one time. I told her, I said, uh, <laughs> quit looking back there. <laughs> I told one lady one time, she was sitting there, her husband, I think, was in the other side of the room. And, and I told her, I said, you know, when people move from where y'all been sitting to here, they get ready to leave the church. Oh, no, Pastor. No, no. Within two weeks, they're in my office. We're leaving. Come on. I, I've been in this business a long time. Amen. If you don't be involved, they will get way back. I don't get close to that. I've actually seen times in our, our church <clears throat> that our choir was singing and there's a glory cloud from the platform or the top of the, 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 the choir. It came down at an angle and stopped at the altar area at the front row. And everything that was in came up into that was in a glory cloud. The rest were not. There's back there, what, what's going on? You know, <laughs> did it thunder? No. The Lord showed up. <laughs> Amen. So the thing is. We, we had to, how involved am I? If you, you know how to go over a fence, throw your heart over it and follow it. That's right. Wow. Amen. Amen. I got that written on my back page in case I don't get there. That's good. Let's go to Philippians 3. Philippians 3. Not Philippines, Philippians. <laughs> Same area. I was looking online in Cambodia that day and saw a different hotel there. I said, man, I want to be there so bad. I see it. Found stuff I recognize in the photo. I, said, I know exactly where that is. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. So I will be doing, I sent out the email for this. Uh, we pray November 6th. I'm doing a healing crusade, salvation crusade in Pakistan by, by Zoom. Okay. And uh, I've already done three there. People were healed, coming to God. This was a different ministry, a very large ministry, and a TV station there. And he is inviting me, trying to get me to go in in January in person. So I'm praying about it. If God says go, I'll go. If God don't say go, I don't go. You know, somebody don't go just on your own for sure. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 through 11. But what things were gained to me? Those I kind of lost for Christ. And something meant, realize the Apostle Paul was very powerful. The reason so powerful, he knew Jesus. That's right. That's right. He had experience with Jesus. Boy. He knew him. <clears throat> A lot of Christians do not know him. They know of him. You know, I know of certain politicians, but I don't know them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I could show up the doors. I've come to eat with you tonight. No, no. <clears throat> Amen. I'm laughing. The same man used to scream so loud and, and when he prayed when I first started the church, he figured out what time we had dinner. He showed up every every day at the same time. Oh, y'all eating? Yeah. You know, so the house said, go ahead, come eat with us. Then I learned, I finally, uh, I've had a rule over the years, most of you know it. Don't ever show up in my house unannounced. And I, I won't I won't show up your house. If I ever show up in your yard unannounced, I've got a knife in my back or somebody just shot me. Okay, I don't do that. And I have I have a right to privacy. You know, I man, we love fellowship, we love company, but I want to know you're coming. I mean, I may not be dressed properly. <laughs> you know, I, you know, preachers don't just stand around in a suit and tie all the time. You realize that. Unless you got a bag. Get my reverend rig on. Okay. Matthew 3, verse 7, again. But what things were gained to me, those I count I lost for Christ. In other words, what was important to me, what meant so much to me, I can't lost for Christ. It doesn't matter anymore. The old song, I know Linda probably remembers it, the things of this world grow strong, strangely dim. So just, the things that are so important just went out of focus. Amen? It just didn't matter anymore. One time I was, I was in Texas, um, I was trying to visit family after I was pastor here. I, as you know, I'm a private pilot. I flew over the land I used to own in the place. I flew, I looked down, I said, I can't believe that one time in my life that was so important to me. It just means nothing anymore. 
Amen. Amen. It just doesn't matter. You have to be willing to leave houses and land, family. We, we load up and move 1,640 miles away from everybody we ever knew to start church here. And since then, we started four in Cambodia. But we, we had to be willing to load up. It broke our heart. It broke their heart. It broke my children's heart to drag them all away from everybody they ever knew. But God said, come here. And that's where I was coming. Amen. Amen. Okay, verse 8. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge yes. of Christ Amen. Jesus, my Lord. My Lord. Yeah. Amen. You remember this very sensitive microphone. Just picking up everything you say. <laughs> for, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, they count them as rubbish that may gain Christ. Just a bunch of garbage. Everything that was so important to me is just nothing anymore. Verse 9. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteous, is, which is from God by faith. And notice that righteousness comes from God by faith. We talked about that a while ago. Verse 10, that I may know him and the power of the resurrection and the fellowship of the servant being conformed to death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection of the dead. Paul said, I want to know him as never before. Here's a man that turns cities upside down, raise the dead, heal the sick, Screams out, I must know him just to know him. That's my cry. I want to know him as never before. I want to walk with him as never before. I have not arrived. I'm a lifelong student. Amen. I'm in studies right now you don't even know anything about. I'm digging. I'm digging deep. Amen. Doing what God said to do. Amen. God, angels appeared, came to me a while back, grabbed my hands, and the Holy Spirit spoke new assignment. I've shared with you. God has shown me, and I'm working on that. I'm working on that direction. God began to open door before me. Amen. I'll be everything he called me to be. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? Let's go to James chapter 4, verse 6. James chapter 4, verse 6. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he said, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I read for you all to hit in that way. Verse 6, James 4, verse 6. But it gives more grace. More grace. Yes. In the book of Acts, we, we said a while back, they said great grace was upon them. Not just grace, but great grace. An increase of grace, which is the unmerited favor of God. Let me repeat myself. And divine enablements. I've seen the dead raised right here in this city one time. I've seen cripples get up and walk. Blind eyes pop over right here in this county. Amen. Amen. Napa Dog Eastern Prison, two crusades in your part, totally 100% blind men, their eyes pop over. I needed great grace. Amen. When that, that little boy was raised from the dead right on field court, we're meeting down below there. We're using Kingston's alteration, field court at Broadway. Amen. Stood off a chair and fell, hit the back of his head. He was screaming, crying, wasn't knocked out. But two months before that, the father law for Louisiana was up here visiting. He had a dream the child was killed. Two weeks before that, the mother had a dream her child was killed. He stood up, hit the back of his neck, screaming, totally conscious. When he picked him up, his neck fell back. He was dead. His neck was broke. Mm -hmm. Amen. Eyes rolled back in his head, run to the front. And suddenly, I felt like a tent follow. We had 40 or 50 people of us in that little basement. Fall over me like that. And it wasn't just me praying. It was all of us praying. Amen. And um, you know how long we prayed? About 15 to 20 seconds. Just within seconds, he sat up and went run around there. He went to a doctor. Right. He's in Mississippi today, college graduate, and bought a business, married a father. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But I needed great grace. Yes. I needed more than just the grace to save me. That's great. But I, I needed an increase. And it fell on me. The, the man in Cambodia did the seven water buffaloes ran over. I've shared that over and over with you. When, whenever I walked up and my legs touched that little can, split cane bed under his house, I felt like a tent. The, the one in field court was like a big one over all of us. This is over me. Boom. Like a mantle fell on me. I said, the man's going to walk. And he did. Amen. It, when I laid hands, an angel just threw him in the air. And he hit the ground, worshiping God. He had broke bones all over. That's God. Hallelujah. But we need great grace. So don't stay in James 4, verse 6, but he gives, gives more grace. Therefore, he said, 
God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. The, listen clear, carefully a statement I wrote here. The cr proud are serving themselves. Yes. It's me, me, me. When, one year uh, around culture of Christmas time, my son uh, got that Christian song that uh, they made a, a different version of it about it's all about him. But so uh, a, a comedian made one and you know, saying it's all about me. It's all about me. He's making a point to the people. You know, it's not about you. But someone proud or serving themselves. How does that feel to me? Now, I can't be involved in this. I'm going to go do this. Amen? Amen. Think about it. Okay, 2 Timothy. Chapter 3. Looked over it. I had my old clock. I see now I face this one. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it last week. It's even right. <clears throat> I always check my watch often. Amen. One time I had a horn doctor, Northern Dutch Hospital, one time I asked me, he said, Pastor, do you watch what you eat? I said, man, I'm a missionary. I watch everything I eat. He crawl off. <laughs> I watch everything I eat. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> like Zig Ziglar used to say, he said, I never accidentally ate anything in my whole life. <laughs> it's always on purpose. Or oh, sometimes I make it back past that hamburger stand. <laughs> you love a good hamburger. Second Timothy 3, verse 1 through nine. But know this, then the last days, perilous times will come. Now, how many people think we may be getting closer last days? You know, I don't, I don't know when he's coming back, but I know one thing I can tell you for sure. This week is seven days closer than last week. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So I don't know how much time I have, but I'm going to work was day. Because night comes and no man can work. Mm -hmm. I want to be in the, the field. Like Pastor said uh, the other day, Pastor Josh said the other day about me and Rich, he said they should be in retirement year, but they're both refired. You know, and that's what we're doing. I had no intention to retire. That's right. Amen. No, mm -hmm. I just want, I don't, I, I wouldn't want to do anything more. It, you know, if I had millions of dollars, I'd do the same thing I do now, but in a bigger way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'd still travel all over the world, but more places, hold bigger meetings, Come on. more buildings, buy some vehicles. I tried to buy a vehicle with my sons at the gospel now. And so be what some years back I bought a real nice four-wheel drive truck. They're still using to go in the mountains and measure the gospel. He's going on motorbikes and I had accidents and there's dangers up there. I've been up there with them. It's tribal people, and uh they'll kill you until God you died, some of them. Amen. And, and uh, I was up there with him. Uh, and one of his uh, uh, lady pastors, living after I came back home, she was pregnant and they attacked her and stabbed her. She lived, but the baby died. <clears throat> you know, it, it's, a, it's another world. Five mother rebel groups and ISIS on the island I work in. Amen. The, the boys play rough. But where, where's, the pad, where's the corp in the padded pews? <laughs> You're going to get a chair you get stuck in. <clears throat> you got a chair for little people there. <laughs> okay, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. For men should be lovers of themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, stop there. I, I wish I could say that. We're only talking about those sinners out there had to come to Christ. No, I'm talking about a whole lot of Christians. That's right. Lovers of themselves. If it feels good, just do it. Mm -hmm. Lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Boasters. Here comes that word again. Proud. Mm. blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, tell like your newspaper, mm. unforgiven, slandered, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, then lover, and lovers of God. Verse 5, notice, having a form of godliness, but denying the power. Mm. How many Christians do you know this walking and the apostolic power that Jesus left for his church. He said in Acts 1 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit come upon right. you. You shall be witnesses. Then not just showing my church card, the witnesses demonstrating 
the power of the gospel. Paul said, let my preaching not be the enticing words of man's wisdom, but the demonstration of the power of the spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. We always say, if you're arrested for being a Christian, there's enough evidence to convict you. That's right. Yeah. I mean, Christians, uh, Brother Lou, that been 30, 40 years in church and never saw one miracle. What? You need to go back and read the book again. But see, we, we had this. Our nation just, we just going to be, we'll go, we're not going to rub anybody the wrong way. Some people said, Pastor, you're petting the cat backwards. You better turn the cat around. <laughs> Amen. 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 As you know, I have my program. I, you know, now I love to go out and eat with people. I eat with many of y'all just for fellowship, but I have my program called Center to Dinner. So now I bring someone out that they brought one while back to the Asian buffet, fed him a good meal, and told him to go to hell. He's shacking up, committing adultery, fornication. Wow. Amen. I love him. But I, I can't, so if y'all in here, I did the same thing to you. <laughs> Took you to my house, fed you a good meal, and told you, did, did you know what this says? Not my word. Amen. But 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 you responded to it. These other people, some of them had it. But yet, we've got to tell somebody. I know parents are afraid of their own children. I don't want to say that. They're going to get offended. Let them get offended. They're going to really be offended in hell and said, my mom and my dad didn't even tell me. Exactly. Yeah. You, you knew I was astray, but you didn't tell me. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, we, we got we got to get strong. We yes. got water here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Somebody help find me here. Where did I stop at? Five. Verse five. Yeah. Second, seven, three. We did five. four. We went to five now. First. Okay. Thank you. Let my page make sure. I'll be right there. Don't worry. Glory to God. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Having a form of God has been denied his power. From such people turn away. That's what it says. It turn away from such people. You know, I, I love everyone. I love my enemies. Literally. Yeah. And that's a choice. But the thing is, there's some people I'm not going to just hang with. They're going to pull me down. Yes. Amen. We, we, we got to hang, hang with people that say, man, we're going somewhere in God. We're growing. This is going to happen. Praise God. God's going to do great things. Now, now we want to associate with the, with the others to bring to God. But if you go to their home and there's darkness in their home and you walk in, it gets darker. There's a problem. Yes. You should be bringing the light. Yes. It should get brighter. We need to be around sinners. That's one problem with a lot of Christians. They only want to hang with Christians. Mm -hmm. They need to hang with some sinners and win them to God. Mm -hmm. But not let the sinner win them the other way. Amen. 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 They need to hear the word of God, the true right. word of God. That's right. Be in, in season, out of season. In season, out of season. Okay, I'll read five again. You don't like it so much. Having a form of God, but denying his power, for such people turn away. For this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins. Led by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. As with Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Corrupt men of corrupt mind disapprove concerning the faith, but they progress no further. For their folly would be manifest to all, as theirs also was. <clears throat> that would be manifest. When I pastored uh, once a year at least, I would I would preach a whole message on a scorner. You read the book of Proverbs, look up scorn, scorner, scoffer, and I tell you, don't repute, don't rebuke a scorner because they'll hate you. You know why? They can't ever see themselves. If I preach, I preach on don't rob banks, and, and there's a bank robber sitting on the front row that was a scorner. They take that show as a man. They're glad they're hearing this message. They never think it was for them. The only reason I preach it so everybody around them will recognize them. 
and not not be influenced. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 I, I talked about people that um one time I said, you know, that back row, I said gonna leave and and this one person, God, when I was in Cambodia, this fax days before we had, I mean, there's 10 bucks a page, by the way. God gave me a major dream. Every word he was going to speak to my son while I was gone. <clears throat> and, and I said to my son, he said, Dad, everything going good right now. After I got home, I was actually on a vacation in Tennessee. My son called me and said, what was that? He said, so he found it. And the man who walked in my son's office, I mean, it was like this. It spoke every word verbatim. That God showed me a dream. God does this. You should be having them. Yeah. And, and then when they got ready to leave the church, he came in. I said, I want you to see this. God gave me this. He read that. He stood there from my dad's with his wife. He said, God didn't tell you that about me. I would fall out, you know. Okay. You know, but he couldn't see it. Amen. Yeah, I could see a pretty decent man, too. You know, I love the man. I think you've had to figure out by now I'm saved. And so we're talking about fulfillment, completeness. The Bible said we're complete in him. Amen. You have to, I'm not going to ask you, but you have to ask yourself today, are you complete? Yes. Or are you fragmented? Well, I'm going to give a little to God, a little to the devil, a little to the world, and I'm going to be a man pleaser. The Bible says, preach the word. Speak the word. Yes, amen. With doctrine, reproof, correction, righteousness. But no, don't, don't, don't rebuke me. I have to sometimes. No, no, don't tell me something I don't want to believe. I have to. You're not going to sit there and teach me some, some false doctrine. Uh uh-uh. uh. Amen. I, I do what they call walk on you, I'll interrupt you in a heartbeat. You'll be around me. No, I, I know how to do that real good. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I'm sort of spewing out. That's, I'm not polite then. Okay. I just, so completeness. The Bible says, seek first. Matthew 6 33. You don't have to look it up. Seek first the kingdom of heaven, his righteousness. Yeah, and all right. these other things that be added to you. It said, you know, Jesus said, I didn't say Jesus said it. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Then all the other things be added. The Lord himself said that. How many Christians do you know that are really seeking first the Lord? When I return tithes, and this is our message on tithing day, it just fit in. When I return tithes, it's a first fruit. Mm-hmm. Okay, Lord, if, if I pay the bills and the cable and the electric and, and um, make sure I have fuel in my tank and, and gas up my car and uh, eat out. If I have some money left, Lord, I will give you a little tip. God don't want your tip. That's right. It's a tithe. Amen. Amen. But how many people do you know that even in other areas, leave money alone, man? I don't know, make some of you nervous. That's good. But how about the rest of your life? What are you seeking first? Well, God, after I do everything I want to do and go where I want to do and hang out with what I want to do and <laughs> Work 500 hours that we had, you know, had only have 168, but I, you know, I'm as dumb as I look. But the thing is, then Lord, if I have time, I, I, you know, I may come to church. You know, I, I may get together with some Christians. Come on, are you see how many Christians you know are really seeking first the kingdom of heaven? Come on, let's just be honest. It's not by my will, it's not my will, but yours be done, Lord. Your will. We know on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. We say Matthew many times. He said, preach the kingdom of heaven is near. We bring it with a word, the kingdom of heaven down. Heal the sick, cleanse the leopard, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely receive, freely give. We bring heaven down. It's not my will, Lord, but yours. You know how many times I've cried my eyes out, leave it overseas. Sometimes my wife be with me. Sometimes she wouldn't be able to be with me. But even when she's with me, we're leaving a lot of family love. I left my church family and everything while I passed her. And it broke my heart to leave. And then when I go there, it broke my heart to leave there to come home. Because I love them so dearly also. I got family overseas, you don't realize. The family of God, amen. There's yeah. people over there that would take a bullet from me, literally. You don't find that too often. 
But that's the kind of disciples we should have with us. If people like Peter, you won't cut somebody's ear off. Their mind are just stand back. Not that he's doing the right thing, but now you have people that, oh, yeah. Come on. It's too many wimpy Christians. So, Lord, let your will be done. Realize, I just read a couple of statements before I go to prayer. My life is not my own. Amen. I bought I bought with the price the blood of Jesus. He died for me. This life is not my own, Lord. I, I want to give you everything I have. Amen. We pray, Lord, give it, give us. Even we, my wife and I, we read the Bible uh, every morning, pray together before we even start moving. Even we get our call, we read the Bible, pray together. It's not the only prayer we do, but start our day like that. But one of the things we pray, Lord, give us health. Raise us up for the mission field and strength for the mission field. The missions is hard. It's not easy. You, you see, you hear the glory stories. Oh, yeah, the lame God of the blind eye pop up. Man, you hear that. But you don't hear about getting up way for daylight. I know some people their job do. I'm sorry. I used to. I, mean, I remember 4 30 in the morning popping up and heading for work while it's still dark. Thank God I'm past that age. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm dark to dead. You're not up yet. I already did that. <laughs> Amen. Unfortunately, I've been waking up too early, much earlier than my wife lately. I just I go in there and hang out with the Lord for a while and feed that animal outside the cat. <laughs> Inherit his cat. I was feeding her in the dark this morning. She couldn't believe it. Really? Yeah. It was still dark. And when, when it got daylight, I saw it was foggy. That's my Yeah. But, but the thing in my, my life, I always, my, my heart would break going overseas. And as soon as my wife couldn't go with me, I remember one time she worked for the Fleet Bank or Bank of America, whichever one it was on income tax. I know you, you worked with her back there. And, and uh, but, but uh, I, I'd be dropping her every morning and going back home, picking her up. And I kept thinking, and so many days, I'll be counting down the days she's going to walk out to get in the car by herself, go home to the empty house. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to be overseas. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't want to cry to talk about it. You, you don't realize how much it hurts sometimes to do God's will. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, I enjoy eating out around here, but when you get overseas, you get tired of having to go look for food every day. Mm -hmm. Amen. One, one time I did get a little kitchenette with a little room and try to cook a few things up. It didn't work real well. And I love to cook, but I just didn't have all the stuff I'd use, okay? And uh, I think I did have a few ramen noodles or something. But but the thing is, you had to go out and look for food. You know, when I'm hungry, I got to go find some. You, your hotel has breakfast after that. You're on your own. That's right. My wife eats a lot of peanut butter and crackers over there while I eat a lot of other things. And so... Uh, I told you a while ago, I wrote this down in the back, let me repeat it. The easiest way over a fence is to throw your heart over. To like follow that. it. Yeah, that's Jesus said to lay up your treasure in heaven where moth and rust is not corrupt. He said, wherever your heart is, your treasure is going to be there. Treasure. Amen. What is your treasure? Not just talking about finances, but what about your time? But what, what about what you could do for God? What what difference could you make in souls being saved and people being discipled? We got people in here discipling people left and right, teaching the good stuff, very powerful stuff that we've helped supply. Amen? Amen. Amen. What lives could you change if you'd only change? Let's stand. This would be. Just one moment. Okay. Let, let's begin to pray together a moment. Glory. And then after just a couple of moments, we'll cut the, <coughs> the recording. And then I want you to go into a heavy prayer. Pray. This, this is a prayer meeting. We want you to go to the presence of God. I had people come to me last week that there's at least two people came to me and said they couldn't hardly stand mm -hmm. in the presence of God in here. Amen. Bring the presence of God down. Bring that glory down. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this word today. Your loving kindness, your tender mercy. <clears throat> we bless you, Lamb of God. God, we speak to every need today. <clears throat> I command not only in this classroom, but 
those who are watching my video, those who are watching overseas, my friends in the Philippines, always on there every every Sunday. Oh God, I can't wait to get back to them. In, the, in these other nations that are watching, Lord God, we command right now every sickness, every disease, every spirit of infirmity, every foul spirit of death to leave them right now. I command every demonic attack be broken by the blood of Jesus right now. God, let their mind be renewed as never before, Lord. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, God, let them be rewired, their brain. Uh, Wash their mind with the word today. Let their brains be rewired. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's keep praying. We turn the tape off. Praise the living God. Just get in there. 